Chartreuse may not be the first thing that you'd reach for to pair with Irish whiskey, but if you think about it, we have monks to thank for both, so maybe there was a little bit of divine inspiration involved in this drink. The first recipe for a drink named Tipperary appeared in 1916 in a book called Recipes for Mixing Drinks by Hugo Enslin. It calls for equal parts Irish whiskey, green chartreuse and sweet vermouth. Our old friend Harry McElhone included it in his 1922 book Harry's ABC of Mixing Cocktails, but with more whiskey and less chartreuse, which is definitely the path that I like to head down when mixing it. But when Harry Craddock includes it in the Savoy cocktail book eight years later, he reverts to equal parts and also just includes another entirely unrelated Tipperary cocktail. The name actually predates the popular ditty and was probably either based on the Irish provenance of the whiskey or thanks to a homesick Irish bartender, but it's pretty impossible to make or drink one of these without getting It's a Long Way to Tipperary stuck in your head. Just consider it another garnish. Hello and sorry to barge in again. I just wanted to give you a very quick update on our online bartending course that we've been working on with the International Open Academy is due to go live in the next couple of days. Uh, there's some details in the descriptions below and there will be some big discounts available for the first little while. So make sure that you jump on as soon as possible if you're interested in elevating your bartending game even further. I've knocked back both the sweet elements a little bit here. So you can sort of think of it as a Manhattan, but with the vermouth component being made up of both vermouth and chartreuse, if that makes sense. Because the Irish whiskey is really the hero in this one, it makes sense to use a quintessentially Irish style. And you do want something with good body and mouthfeel. So I've gone for a single pot still, red breast, and it is the 15, which is a particularly delicious drop. So I'm very much looking forward to that. It has enough complexity to stand up in this, but it's still quite smooth and approachable. Regular viewers might notice that this is actually our first cocktail using chartreuse. And it's actually because I find it quite overpowering when used injudiciously. It's definitely not a go-to for me. Chartreuse is a herbal liqueur that has been made by monks to the same recipe since the 16th century. The very original recipe was given to the monks as a gift promising to be the elixir of life, a potent potion using 130 plants, herbs and flowers and coming in at a whopping 69%. This version is still available, but very rare. So the two commercially available versions are green and yellow. The green is still pretty high in alcohol at 55%. And so it's quite sharp with real kind of savory herbs and a faint mintiness. Uh, the yellow is more mellow, funnily enough, and sweeter and less boozy again. Because we are using sweet vermouth already, I think you need the bite of green chartreuse to stop it getting cloying and it's of course green, which is always gonna work well in an Irish drink. I tend to think of it more as bitters and actually only really use five to 10 mils at a time. Some people absolutely love it though, so feel free to hike up to 15 mils if that's your thing. And for me, the sweet vermouth here is essentially the binding agent. So you've got the Irish whiskey being the star of the show and then the chartreuse is the highlight and the vermouth just creates a little flavor bridge between them. So I prefer something a little more restrained like Dolan Rouge because it kind of echoes the herbal notes of the chartreuse but isn't too heavy and it's not gonna try and make itself kind of a star player. Cinzano or Martini could certainly work too but don't really go anything heavier like Hockey or Punta Mez because it would make it quite a different drink. The bitters are also not traditional, but they are included in the Dead Rabbits version of the Tipperary, which is probably America's most famous Irish bar at this point. Controversial call, I know. But these guys take their cocktails and their Irishness seriously, so of course took it upon themselves to perfect this drink. For me, the bitters just do what they do. They lift the cocktail through the mid palate and let those herbal notes play out really nicely at the end, mixed in with a little bit more of a floral twist as well. The original Tipperary cocktail did have an orange twist, but I prefer using a lemon twist just to kind of lighten and brighten everything up and really highlight that beautiful citrus note of the whiskey. If you prefer something a little bit rounder and sweeter, then absolutely stick to orange. As always, we're gonna get our twist ready first. Just gonna cut away from ourselves on the lemon. This one's a little bit knobbly. And then we just cut off all of the white part of the piss. You can absolutely leave it rustic. I'm just gonna trim this down a little bit for the gram. Now we're gonna start with two dashes of your orange bitters. I'm using Regan's. They were quite small dashes, so we'll do an extra one. And then just a little 10 mils of green chartreuse. 
20 ml of sweet vermouth. And then our hero of the drink, fill 60 ml of your hot still Irish whiskey or Irish whiskey of some kind. And now we're gonna pack as much ice as we can fit in here to stir down on. Then we're gonna give it a little stir by just popping the back of your bar spoon against the inside of the mixing glass and sort of pushing the ice around so it's nice and smooth. Give it a little taste. It's better, still was just a little bit bitey beforehand. Then we're gonna grab our coop out of the fridge or freezer. The glassware that we're using here has come from Rona Glassware. You can get their stuff locally through Cedar Hospitality in Brunswick. If we can work out who has it elsewhere, then we'll definitely put the links in the description below. This one's technically a Nick and Nora glass, but I think it works well for these kind of stir down boozy cocktails. Takes us back to the twenties. Just use your julep strainer to hold the ice back in your glass. Then we're gonna give our lemon twist a sharp fold over the top of the drink. Give it a little twist. This one's a pretty chunky boy. Pop that on the side. And there we have it. Tipperary cocktail. So now you know. Probably give it a little try. It's really nice having that lemon sort of mingle with uh, those more kind of, yeah, keep saying the word, but really kind of herbal notes that you're getting there, heaps of sort of dry thyme and a little bit of sage. It's honestly really as much as this cocktail can ever be, like it's a real kind of summer Manhattan almost. It's just, it's really light, bright, really citrusy. It's got the perfect amount of chartreuse for me. Like it's just a little kind of accent flavor without being at all overpowering. Again, like just a pretty harmonious drink. You almost, I would struggle to kind of pick out each individual uh, flavor there, but everything just works together really nicely um, to be a really beautifully balanced and elegant cocktail. Looks like something I should be drinking in a 1920s cocktail lounge and tastes like it too.